<clears throat> Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Anne's as we celebrate this 4th of July weekend on this 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant this evening is our pastor, pastor of St. Anne's, Father Chris Schaffner. Our opening hymn is Praise of My Soul, the King of Heaven, number 549, and we invite you to participate in the responsorial psalm. Our eyes are fixed on the eyes of on the Lord. So if you please rise, we'll greet our celebrant with Please my praise my soul, the King of Heaven. Praise my soul, the King of heaven, to the feet thy tribute bring. Ransom, heal, restore, river given, evermore his praises sing. Alleluia, alleluia, praise the risen death. Praise him. For his grace and favor to his children in distress. Praise him still the same forever, slow to chide and swift to bless. Alleluia, alleluia, give glorious in his faithfulness. Father, Well, our feeble frame he knows. In his hand he bears us, rescues us from all our woes. Alleluia, alleluia. Wisely yet his mercy he In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My friends, as we prepare ourselves to enter into these sacred mysteries of Jesus Christ, we begin by calling to mind our sins, asking God for his pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Hard of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God. And whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. To you I lift up my eyes, who are enthroned in heaven, as the eyes of servants are on the hands of their masters. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. As the eyes of a maid are on the hands of her mistress, so are our eyes on the Lord our God. Till he have pity on us. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Have pity on us, O Lord, have pity on us, for we are more than sated with contempt. Our souls are more than sated with the mockery of the arrogant, for with contempt of the proud. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord.
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joses and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Every day I, I become more and more amazed and intrigued uh, at the power of the internet. And you know, certainly there, there's lots of information out there, uh, quite a bit, uh, much more than we realize. Uh, not all of it's, it's great information, not all of it's even correct information. Uh, but, but I am intrigued, uh, amazed by the, the type of information that many people will begin to share, particularly uh, their own life stories. You know, there, there's something about us where we, we need to tell our story. And uh, so often the case is that uh, we, we don't always share those most intimate parts of ourselves, even with the people that we are closest to, our families and our loved ones. Uh, but it's, it's odd that on the internet it's a completely different story because uh, some, somehow then there's this boldness to share the deepest struggles and uh, the hardships of our life with millions of strangers all over the world. And, and I think it's, in, in that respect, it's, it's kind of cool to be able to have this platform, uh, this ability to reach out to so many and to let them know that they, we are all sharing in a common human experience. You know, no matter what we may be going through, we can find someone who's gone through something similar. And I think it's comforting. Uh, it's certainly consoling in many ways. You know, just the other day, I ran across uh, a testimony from a young man. He was about 30 years old, and he was sharing uh, his first experience of seeing a therapist. And his revelation at the end of the session, uh, I think, can be very relevant for many people. Certainly, I resonated with it, uh, and perhaps uh, many of us might as well. And, and he said this. He said, my first day in therapy, my, my therapist says this. He says, uh, she told me, you seem really well adjusted for someone who's never gone to therapy. And why are you here? And he answered her by saying, well, I'm a good husband. I'm a good father. I'm a good friend. I'm a good employee. But I want to be great at all those things. And I feel like if I could be great at those all by myself, then that would have happened by now. So I'm reaching out, getting help. And his therapist, she said to him, she said, an employee is someone you are for your job. A husband is someone you are for your wife. A friend is someone you are for your friends, and a father is someone you are for your son. But who are you for yourself? Who are you outside of those roles? And the man said that, that he took those words, and he actually began to cry about that, and he heard himself answer her, and he said, I'm not sure that there's much of a person left at the end of all that. You know, for him, that was the start of a journey of discovering who he really was. And I think this is not necessarily an uncommon experience for so many of us. 
Because in our lives, we are so busy, we're running around, we're playing so many different roles in our life, and we actually begin to define ourselves by those roles. I'm a parent, I'm a worker, I'm a friend, I'm a whatever. You know, and yet, what happens when those roles suddenly end? Or those roles are stripped away? Suddenly, for many, we don't know who we are anymore. And I think this is very common uh, for parents. Once their kids have all graduated, they've moved out of the house. You know, they're no longer playing out that role every day of being mom and dad. And so there's some angst left there as they're trying to figure out, well, who are we now? I think it's very common uh, for a person who invests all of their energy into their work and their career. At the moment, they may, if they should lose their job or, or maybe they retire at the end of their career, they can be at a loss to figure out, well, who am I now? And I think the distinction here really lies between understanding our role and our identity. Because a role is something that we do. How we act in a particular situation, how we relate to particular people in our lives. But an identity goes much deeper. An identity is something that you are. It's something given to us by God that pervades every single role we may take on in life. And an identity is something that's going to persist no matter what the circumstance, because it's so deeply ingrained in our hearts and our souls. Now, I think this is where the struggle for many people lies, however. We struggle trying to figure out our identity. We know our roles, but we don't necessarily know who we are. And we might struggle even trying to understand other people's identity. You know, a perfect example of this is in the gospel today. Jesus goes home to his hometown of Nazareth, going to see all of the, the people, friends, and neighbors that he's known since, a boy, since his boyhood. And when they see him, they see him teaching with authority in the synagogue. They, t they see him working miracles, and they don't accept him. They don't accept him because he's no longer playing the role that they have in their mind for who he should be. And they actually say it. They say, well, who is this? He's the carpenter's son. Or we know his relatives. We knew him as a boy. Where is he getting all this? And they don't accept him because they can't see Jesus' identity, who he really is. You know, Jesus had always had this identity. He knew who he was. But he's only now beginning to reveal this to the masses. They can't see, however, that he truly is the son of God. You know, we look at ourselves and we have to ask ourselves at some point in our life, who am I? What is my true identity as an individual? And certainly, I know I've, I've talked about this before, but I think it bears repeating until we get it to a point where we truly embrace it within our hearts and souls. And the fact is, our true identity for each of us, for each one of us, is that we are a beloved child of God. Beloved sons, beloved daughters of our Lord and God. Each one made in his image and likeness, destined to grow more and more into that image the more and more we surrender our lives to him. We have to keep revisiting that, that truth until it really gets into the very heart and soul of who we are. And yet, I think there's an even bigger question uh, that, that we are asked to, uh, to consider. And this is even bigger than what is my identity as an individual. And this is what is our identity as the church? I think this is a question that, that we rarely address, if ever. But it's so necessary, especially in our day, because our church, we get so wrapped up in everything that we do, our roles in the church, that we forget who we are. And I think right now the church is in a season uh, where we're being asked to reflect on this question. You know, as we, we've tried so many things over the, the decades, so many programs, so many initiatives, so many other things, and those are all great, and we've seen fruits from them. But have we seen all of the fruits that we can? I think there could be so much more. So I, I think we're being asked at this time in our history to take a step back from just being a community of doing and to really lay a firmer foundation of being a community of being. 
We need to discover, we need to articulate, we need to embrace our very deepest identity as, as church. Let it be something that seeps into the very pores of our hearts and souls. Let it grow from within. So, who are we as church? Uh, some of you uh, were, were around when, uh, during the, uh, the papacy of Pope Paul VI. Uh, he, he served from 63 to 78. And he answered this very question of who we are back in 1975. He wrote a document called Evangelii Nunciandi. And in it, he asserts, he says, the church exists to evangelize. He says, this is the church's deepest identity to be evangelists in the world. We are God's instruments in the world to radiate the love of Jesus Christ and spread the gospel message. And I think, you know, we hear that and we're like, of course, that's, that's the goal. That's who we are. You know, maybe the first question we need to ask is, are we doing that? But secondly, we need to ask, well, what does that really mean? You know, where does that identity come from? Easy answer to that, of course, well, it comes from God. But, but I would challenge us to go a little bit deeper and to take a look at our story as the human race. And we'll find that our identity as evangelists actually comes uh, as a response to God's love for us. You see, we, we go all the way back and we realize that we were created, each one of us, in love by a God who knows each of us by name. But then we fell. We fell to sin through the trickery of the devil and we lost that perfect friendship with God. But Jesus came into our human condition he experienced everything that we experience except sin. And then he redeemed us. He saved us through his life, death, and resurrection. And now all that remains is our response. You know, how do we respond to that love? How do we accept that gift of grace that he offers? How do we live for him? How do we share the gospel message? How do we go out and make disciples of every nation? And that response, that's evangelization. That response, and it's not something that, that stems uh, from a thought that, well, I think this is just a great idea. But it stems from the conviction that I know who I am. That I am a beloved son. I am a beloved daughter of my God. So beloved that he chose to create me. So beloved that he chose to save me, even though I'm a sinner. So beloved that he chooses even still today to love me and to walk with me through everything that I go through in this life. And all I can do in response is to choose to love him and to live in his heart, the heart of the one who loves me so much. And that then impels me to share what I've received with others, to go out and, and say, this is the Jesus who died for me. This is the Jesus who rose for me. This is the Jesus who walks with me and has transformed my heart. And when we respond like that, we can't hold it in. It becomes a natural response. It becomes who we are. It becomes our identity. And I think when we embrace this, it, it changes absolutely everything. You know, every other role that we take on in life, whether it's in our family, at our work, in the community, wherever, that newly embraced identity colors all of that. Now, this is evangelization. In fact, Pope Paul actually wrote this. He says, here lies the test of truth, the touchstone of evangelization. He says, it's unthinkable that a person should accept the word and give himself to the kingdom without becoming a person who bears witness to it and proclaims it in his turn. When we accept our identity, our entire life changes. You know, the way that we parent changes because we want nothing more than that our children should know Jesus Christ very intimately. The way that we love our spouse changes. Our number one goal is to help them to get to heaven. Our friendships change. They become very Christ-centered relationships, unashamed as we walk with them and accompany them in faith. 
And as people you know, see this transformation in us and they know that we've embraced this identity, uh, then they're gonna know that something has changed within us. You know, much like the people in, in the prophet Ezekiel today, that reading says they will know that a prophet has been among them. And so I, I think it's, it's no little thing that Pope Paul would encourage the church now 45 years ago to embrace this identity and to live it out boldly in the world. In fact, he says this. He says, let us therefore per, per preserve our fervor of spirit. Let us preserve the delightful and comforting joy of evangelizing, even when it is in tears that we must sow. May it mean for us as it did for John the Baptist, for Peter and Paul, for the other apostles, and for a multitude of splendid evangelizers all throughout the church's history. May it mean for us an interior enthusiasm that nobody and nothing can quench. May it be the great joy of our consecrated lives, and may the world of our time, which is searching, sometimes with anguish, sometimes with hope, being able to receive the good news, not from evangelizers who are dejected, discouraged, impatient, or anxious, but from ministers of the gospel whose lives glow with fervor, who have first received the joy of Christ and are willing to risk their lives so that the kingdom may be proclaimed and the church established in the midst of the world. I think those, those are beautiful words, powerful, powerful words, impelling us to live as evangelists in the world. But we have to ask ourselves, each day of our lives, are we just playing out the roles that we've been given, or are we truly living out our identity in Jesus Christ? I think it's important for us to know the basic truths, that you are a beloved son, you are a beloved daughter of our Lord, and as church, we are called to be evangelists in the world. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, my friends, let us turn to our Father in heaven with all of our needs and petitions. for Pope Francis, our bishops, all priests and deacons, for all who hold and teach the Catholic faith. May their efforts to spread the gospel message of Jesus Christ strengthen the faith of those who believe and enlighten the hearts of those whose faith is weak. We pray to the Lord. Lord for a deep respect for life at all of its stages, from conception to natural death, and for an end to all practices that threaten the dignity and sanctity of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord for our nation, as we celebrate our independence this weekend, may we come to know that true freedom has been won for us in Jesus Christ, and that we are called to use that freedom to build the kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all travelers during this holiday weekend, 
May they reach their destinations in safety and security, create many pleasant memories with loved ones, and return home refreshed. We pray to the Lord. Lord For farmers, may God be gracious in granting them abundant crops despite the recent lack of rain, and may they not be greatly distressed by the impact of the dry weather. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the souls of all the faithful departed, especially James and Gertrude Matcham, may they know the mercy of Christ and rise with him to new and eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Almighty, eternal Father, we turn to you in humble, confident faith that you hear and answer all of our prayers. Accept these needs and those that remain in the silence of our hearts and answer them all in accord with your most holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This weekend, uh, we are reinstituting our ushers and our collections. Uh, so. Uh, while there are still baskets at the door, we'll be getting rid of those next week. Uh, we'll have the collection on the baskets coming down the aisles shortly. We've also inst reinstituted our children's baskets. So uh, any young ones who are here today who'd like to come forward and, and make an offering, uh, you can come forward at this time as well. While the gifts are gathered and prepared, please join us in number 461. Come to me. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy burdened, and I shall give you rest. Take up my yoke and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. You, God, are my shepherd, I shall never be in need. Fresh and green are the meadows where you give me rest. Come to me, all who labor and not heavy burden, and I shall give you rest. Take up my yoke and look. For I am meek and humble of heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Beside peaceful waters, you restore my true self. There you lead me to walk in the path of new life. Come to me on labor and on heavy burden, and I shall give you rest. Take up my yoke and learn from me, for I am me. find rest for your souls. Yes, my look is easy, and my burden is light. Should I be surrounded by the shadows of death, I will not fear, for you are steadfast in your love. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy burden, and I shall give you rest. Take all my yoke and learn from me, 
for I am weak and humble of heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy, and my burden is Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anne and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, his assistant Andrew, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now, at the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us your
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The peace of the Lord is given unto you. Receive it in your heart. The, body of Christ. the joy of the Lord is with you too. Receive it in your heart. Make it grow in you. A shepherd he feeds his flock and gathers the lambs in his arms, holding them carefully close to his heart, leading them home. Say to the cities of Judah, prepare.
Let us pray. And grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please note on the parish bulletin this weekend uh, our nominees for the two open positions for our uh, St. Anne's Pastoral Council. Uh, you'll find short bios for each of the candidates. Uh, parish elections will then take place next weekend, July 10th and 11th. Uh, please note we're still taking uh, registrations for some of our upcoming summer youth activities. Uh, Totus Tuus, which is a, a week-long uh, kind of a vacation Bible school sort of program uh, for grades 1 through 12 uh, is the week of July 25th to the 30th at the end of this month. Uh, the day program for grades 1 through 6, uh, however, is, is full. Uh, we filled all of the available spots for that. Uh, but there are still spots available for the evening program for grades 7 through 12. Uh, more information can be found in the bulletin today. Registration and information can be found at the tables uh, near the entrances as well. Uh, a vacation Bible school for our preschool children uh, is scheduled to take place on the week of August 8th through the 12th. Uh, again, more information at the table in the bulletin this weekend. Uh, all of these programs are in conjunction with St. Mary's in Lee Center and Nativity in Cleveland. And then finally, uh, today, uh, happy 4th of July weekend to, uh, to everyone. Blessings uh, on your weekend, however you are spending it. Uh, may it be a very relaxing, safe, and blessed uh, observance. So as we conclude then, uh, let us offer our prayer to the Blessed Virgin, and particularly on this weekend, we, we pray for our nation. Uh, we offer up all the needs uh, of all of our citizens and our, and our nation as we say, Hail Mary, Hail Mary. full of grace, Hail the Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. As we go forth, please join in singing our closing hymn, America the Beautiful, number 735. I live.